Hi everybody. Um, today I will talk about our circuit analysis for transmission line. Sorry that I have you know some part of this one in the time, but uh, um, just like a couple of pages. But uh, page number three through page number eight is going to be uh, written in English. Uh, just the uh, one third student understand about or, you know like lecture in English. So uh, let's get started with the uh, in general picture of our transmission line. Um, when you take a look at a transmission line, this is a very basic circuit. Uh, you're gonna have what supply voltage, right, or input, and you have uh, the source impedance. You have a uh, load impedance connected to a uh, transmission line and uh, the transmission line itself have uh, characteristic impedance Z0 and this is the equivalent circuit for a transmission line you have a uh, R in series with L and you have a uh, G in parallel with C and uh, you have uh, R prime, L prime, G prime, C prime and that's we call distributed parameters uh, with the unit or per meter, R prime is going to be your ohms per meter, L Henry per meter, G prime, Mo per meter, C prime, Farad per meter. Now, when you take a look at the all distributed parameters, it's going to play your important roles uh, in the term of uh, to fight a Z zero. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is Z0 equal to uh, square root R plus J omega L over G plus J omega C. And uh, this represents Z0 because later on you will compare to uh, the load impedance. Either is going to give you a reflection or not. Uh, the reflection is, is in term that's something that you don't want because it's going to make a uh, distortion uh, in signals. And also, uh, you have a uh, okay. For the special case, you consider a lossless uh, transmission line. You have our R prime is about zero, or G prime is about zero, and uh, this term drop, this term drop, and uh, G omega cancel out. So you end, end up with the uh, uh, square root L over C. So this is the special case for lossless transmission line. And also you have another term that we call a propagation constant, which is equal to square root R plus J omega L multiplied by G plus J omega C. And this gives you uh, the real part, alpha, and uh, imaginary part, beta. For alpha, we call attenuation constant. And with the unit of neighbor per meter, you take a look at this uh, plot uh, between your signal and the depth inside materials. Either it can be your conductors or ocean. When you're getting deeper into your materials, your uh, signal start decreasing uh, corresponds to your exponential term, exponential negative alpha x when x is the depth in uh, materials. If your alpha equal to zero, this gives you a one, right? So uh, your signal still stay the same. It doesn't change. Uh, the bigger the alpha, uh, that give you a reduce your uh, signal faster. And for uh, your Beta is the phase constant, the unit of radian per meter. That means uh, when you are, s your signals get deep into uh, materials, your phase will change. Same as the Z0 for the case of lossless transmission line. R equal to 0, G equal to 0. And that gives you a gamma equal to uh, j omega square root lc and 
just give you beta equal to omega square root LC. And this term is also give you uh, uh, signal velocity in the uh, transmission line. Because you know that, that your beta equal to 2 pi over lambda, if you multiply by frequency uh, for um, nominator, you can have like 2 pi f that's give you omega. And uh, denominator, you have uh, lambda f that's give you a uh, velocity. So uh, basically, beta equal to uh, omega over uh, signal velocity in transmission line. And you can find uh, your v equal to uh, omega over beta. In the case of lossless transmission line, you know that beta equal to uh, what? Omega square root uh, LC. And omega cancel out, so you end up with uh, v equal to 1 over square root LC uh, meter per second. So your velocity depends on the inductance and capacitance only. Next, we're okay. Now, uh, if you take a look at the example for a transmission line, if I have L prime equal to 12 12 Henry per feet, and uh, your capacitance equal to 2 picofarad per feet, you can find uh, Z0. That's the for the lossless transmission line. It's going to be equal to LOC. So, uh, for the fender is 10 to uh, negative 15, right? And pico is like 10 to uh, negative 12. So that's give you a z0 to be 0 0.077 ohms. And for the propagation constant in the case of uh, loss test as well, you have for uh, i equal to 0, g equal to 0. So you end up with uh, j omega square root of uh, 12 multiplied by 10 to negative 12 multiply by 2 or 10 to or negative 12 and that's give you or you know beta so you beta equal to 1.55 10 to or negative 13 omega radian per meter now or for transmission line you or take a look at the load end you have uh, the friction coefficient tau L equal to uh, ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0 when ZL is the load impedance and Z0 is the characteristic uh, impedance of your transmission line. The same as the source. You have our tau S equal to uh, ZS minus Z0 over ZS plus Z0 when ZS is the source you know, impedance. Now we'll take a look at the special cases. For the open end, or your ZL equal to infinity, take a look at the equation of tau L, uh, when uh, ZL much, much greater than uh, Z0, you ignore Z0, and that gives you a tau L equal to 1. And your tau L actually is equal to, uh, we have a uh, forward voltage or the forward signal and then uh, from the load go to the source we call the backward voltage or the voltage signal and the ratio of V uh, backward VB over VF or forward that's going to give you a uh, tau L so that's mean your uh, backward uh, voltage is going to be equal to uh, the forward voltage in this case, at the load, uh, both the forward voltage and the backward voltage add up, and then skip you. Or in the case of you have uh, the voltage to be A, so it's going to be a double of A. That's mean uh, you get uh, um, something that you don't want to, because you want to load uh, receiver. Uh, the voltage to be A, right? Not to A. So that's why it's called bad. 
and uh, for the shorted end transmission line you have a ZL equal to zero then uh, your tau L is going to be equal to uh, negative one that even you know worst because the, when you have the forward voltage to be A and you have uh, the backward voltage to be a negative A right because the the friction coefficient is equal to or negative one, so you have the opposite uh, side of your signal, and when you add it up, it gives you a zero. That means uh, the load impedance uh, or the load, you know, doesn't you know receive any signal at all. For ZL not equal to Z zero, uh, your tau L will follow this equation, and that's not equal to zero. And for ZL equal to Z zero, we call match impedance, and that's give you a tau L or diffraction coefficient at the load to be zero, and that's going to be a perfect case because the, this is what you want. The load will receive your signal with the amplitude or with the uh, voltage to be A, as you are looking for. Next. Uh, let's analyze the signal uh, on the transmission line. Uh, if I have a RLC or circuit, you know, they are all in a series, and you have the supply voltage VI, and you have the current flowing through the circuit. They are equal as through L, R, and C to be uh, I subscript uh, the letter I. If I set up this one VI equal to or the amplitude VA and the term that's the time dependent to be your J omega T and also I equal to IA exponential J omega T. Um, we can write our the voltage drop across you know R equal to uh, I multiplied by R. That's very simple, right? And you just uh, substitute uh, II equal to IA exponential J omega T. And for uh, the voltage drop across the inductance, uh, inductor VL equal to L di by dt. You simply differentiate, you know, uh, the current equation, you know, with respect to uh, T. So you have uh, J omega and you still have L and then uh, IA then multiply by exponential of J omega T and for VC a little bit more uh, complicated because you have to uh, we know equation for IC equal to our C dV C by dT right? and you need to do uh, uh, integration to find VC so that's give you 1 over C integration of II dT equal to uh, when you integrate, you plug in uh, II equal to IA exponential J omega T. And you have uh, J omega. You divide this one by J omega, and you still have C here. And the rest still be the term of I subscript I. And you can also write in the term of negative J uh, IA over omega C exponential J omega T. So basically, for KVL, you know that VI is going to be uh, the voltage drop across inductor, and then the voltage drop across resistor, plus the voltage drop across the capacitor. So VI is simply equal to VL plus VR plus VC, equal to uh, uh, you just plug in. This is the your VR, this is VL, and this is your VC, and you just ignore the time dependent term. So if you take a look at this quick, you have a V simply followed by Ohm's law, right? V equal to IR or V equal to Z I and then your Z or total impedance of your circuit simply become uh, the real term plus imaginary term. And the real one is just really R, right? And for L and C, skip your imaginary term. So that's why you have J, you know, here. So this has become R plus J 
uh, multiplying by omega L minus 1 over omega C. Okay. Let's move on to page number 3. Let's take a look at the problem, 3 by 3 in my book. Actually, uh, I have a circuit here. You have our RLC circuit in series. And you have uh, the supply voltage to be 10 volt at 10 kHz. Looking for impedance, total impedance of your circuit here. You have uh, the real part. Uh, simply, you know, like you can take a look at the Z plane. And your real part is what? R. So you have R square plus imaginary part square. So this is the omega L minus 1 over omega C square. You take the square root of that. You have a total impedance of your circuit. And that's give you a 1.06, 10 to the 6 ohms. And for the voltage drop across the inductance, you know that VL equal to L dt dr by dt, right? So uh, this is your I term. And you differentiate with respect to T. You have a J omega here. You still have L. You have Ia and exponential J omega T. So, and now you're looking for Ia. What is your Ia? Since there you have uh, the supply voltage to be tenfold, and the total impedance of your circuit is the 1.06. 10 to the 6. So you simply divide 10 fold by 1.06 10 to the 6. And that gives you uh, about 9.43 microamp. And your VL, uh, you want to find the magnitude of your VL. You know, RA, right? Just right here. And then uh, you ignore J term. And the magnitude of exponential J omega T actually is equal to 1. And then you have only omega term L multiplied by IA. So that's why I have omega L IA right here. And you have omega equal to uh, 2 pi F. F is like 10 kHz. L is the 20 micro, 20 micro Henry. And IA, you have like uh, 9.43 micro M. And that gives you 1.18, 10 to uh, negative 5 volt. Next, the voltage drop across resistance, just straightforward, V equal to IR, right? You know, IA equal to 9.43 microamp. So you just simply multiply by R. R is 100 ohms. That's give you 9.43, 10 to negative 4, 4. Next one is the phase anchor. You know, uh, the phase anchor simply become R10 or of the what the imaginary part ray right, divided by your uh, the real part and your imaginary part is the is come from uh, l and c so you have a uh, omega l minus one omega c divided by r and you know you can uh, plug in number by yourself next number four um, for the same problem, they ask you to uh, draw uh, the V-plane diagram. So when for the V-plane diagram, uh, this one is the real part, and this one is the imaginary part. The real part is simply V equal to AR, right? And that's the equal to IA multiplied by R. For the imaginary part, uh, you have L and you have C easy to recognize. So it becomes IA multiplied by omega L minus 1 omega C. And you have IA already uh, 9.43 microamp and R omega L C they are all given. So you can plug in the number. Now let's take a look at the transmission line theory. This is the equivalent circuit of your transmission line. When you cut the line with the length of the x, you have L in series with R, and you have G in parallel with C. At this point, let's put at the 
x and this one is going to be x plus dx right because you have the length of the line is dx and this is the vxt and you also have the current at this point to be ixt on the right hand when you move to the right by dx this has become uh, the voltage become v plus the partial derivative of v with respect to x and multiply by dx same as i is going to be i plus partial derivative of the current with respect to x multiplied by dx and uh, in this case v can be written in the term of uh, vx and then multiply by term dependence term which is equal to uh, e to the power j actually gamma t that's what I'm missing gamma t right here and if you take a look v is going to be your uh, uh, two terms the first one I wrote this down as the a exponential negative gamma x this is uh, represent the forward uh, voltage is moved from the source to the load and for the second term that's b exponential uh, to the power positive gamma x this is become uh, the backward voltage move from the load to uh, the source same as the current I can write you know this one in the term of the forward current plus the backward current and you also can write the current in the term of V for your V equal to this term uh, simply apply the uh, Ohm's law right? V equal to AR R equal to V over R but for a transmission line uh, you cannot just pick up this term but you need to uh, change uh, the positive sign here to be a negative sign because this is the transmission line it has something to do with uh, uh, math I will not explain at this point and then uh, you divide by Z0 when Z0 is characteristic evidence does depend on the L R G C or distributed uh, parameters and for your gamma you know is the propagation constant also be can be written in the term of R L G and C equal to uh, square root R plus J omega L multiplied by G plus J omega C and of course this give you the real part and imaginary part and your real part is again attenuation constant and your beta is the phase constant now let's take a look at the special cases for the open uh, circuit termination uh, you have ZL equal to infinity you have the voltage source at this point let's put this down as x equal to negative L when L is the length of the transmission line and at this point x equal to zero for the source impedance of the open circuit uh, I write this one down as the Z is zero when zero is represent open so are you looking for uh, the impedance of the line Z is zero you need to find um, impedance as this you know point or at X equal to negative L when you have this equation right Z equal to V over I this is your V so you plug in X equal to your negative L right here but uh, what you need to consider is that uh, you need to find the relation uh, between A and B for the open circuit termination of transmission line at X equal to zero you you know that it has no current at this point because it's open circuit you pick up this one this is your I right when you plug in X equal to zero this term drop this term drop and you have a minus B equal to I but your I is equal to zero so uh, a minus B equal to zero does give you a equal to B does give you a relation between a and B 
and then uh, you work on math um, if looking for z is 0 equal to v or at x equal to negative l over i at x to negative l uh, what happened is that you just pick up uh, equation for v so it's become a exponential positive gamma l right because you plug in x equal to negative l negative and negative is give you positive and the second term you have a b exponential negative gamma l and you work on math uh, you will find that finally you will give you where z is zero equal to z zero and our cotangent of uh, gamma l now for uh, approximation for uh, you take a look at this term this is your z is zero or open circuit uh, transmission line for cotangent gamma l if gamma l much much less than one this term can be approximate to be uh, about one over gamma l so uh, your z is zero going to be z zero divided by gamma l right and now you write your z zero in the term of l and c and your gamma uh, right in the term of l and c your z zero e equal to uh, for lossless transmission line z zero equal to uh, square root l o c right your gamma equal to j omega square root l c and l here actually is the length it's not the uh, inductance it's my mistake so uh, let's take a look at this one l cancel route right so you have uh, z is zero equal to uh, negative j because i move j to the top and I have omega um, c multiplied by l. l is actually the length of uh, the transmission line. Okay, so that's for the open end uh, transmission line. Now take a look at the shorter end transmission line. You see l here equal to zero. So, and you know that instead of you consider the current not like the open end right we consider uh, the current at this point equal to zero but for the shorter in uh, transmission line you know that the voltage at this point equal to zero because it's shorter to ground right so when you v at x equal to zero equal to zero you have a plus b equal to zero and that's give you a equal to negative b different than uh, for the open circuit ray you have a equal to b and you work out the same thing on math so at this point your impedance at the source or at x equal to negative l is going to give you this term instead of uh, give you a cotangent gamma l but it's give you a ten uh, tangent uh, uh, cotangent of uh, what 10 right same if uh, your gamma l is much much less than 1 your hyperbolic 10 gamma l is going to be about our gamma l and you just plug in this term by your gamma l and your z0 equal to square root l over c and your gamma equal to j omega square root l c for the last less transmission line right and multiply by the length of the transmission line you end up with this term j omega l and multiply by the length of the line for a lossless transmission line and uh, number three is the arbitrary termination impedance when your zl not equal to zero and your zl 
not equal to infinity. What you need to do at this point, at the x equal to 0, z equal to v over i. You have this term a plus b over a minus b multiplied by z 0. And then uh, you have what? Um, you uh, rearrange the term. Uh, you can get a b over a in the term of z l and z 0 become this. And let's make it equal to p. So you're looking for uh, the impedance of the transmission line or at x equal to negative l. You just work on math. And uh, you get rid of a and b. But, uh, or you can write a and b in the term of z l and z 0. You can work out by yourself. You can have uh, the impedance of the transmission line equal to z0 multiplied by zl plus z0. Uh, actually, this should be hyperbolic 10. Uh, gamma l divided by uh, z0 but plus zl, hyperbolic 10, or gamma l. This is the arbitrary termination impedance of your transmission line. Next. Um, let's take a look at some example here. Um, when you have C equal to 20 picofarad per feet, L equal to 30 uh, feet long, the length of the transmission line, and uh, the frequency is the 500 uh, kHz for the open transmission line, ask you to find uh, impedance of the transmission line. You can take the equation, uh, impedance of the open end transmission line is equal to negative j over omega c multiplied by l, when l is the length of the transmission line. Just plug in the number, just give you a negative 530.52 j ohms. And you can also find the current, the same problem here. And your Vs is like 4, 4. So you divide it 4 by Z total. That's your Z, right? 530.52. Let's give you 7.5 milliamps. OK, the last one is there. I just show you for the shorter uh, transmission line. When uh, the length of the transmission line are 14 inches long. Or actually, you know, divide by 12 to make it in feet. Let's get there 1.667. L is given, R is given, V is given, F frequency is given, 10 megahertz. Ask you to find the current. So the current actually is equal to uh, the voltage divided by the impedance of the transmission line. So you divide it by uh, 3 by uh, impedance of the transmission line. This is your impedance of the transmission line of the shorted end transmission line, right? You have J omega L. L is the inductance multiplied by the length of the line. And your L is what? 10, uh, what? Ten, uh, what did you do wrong here? Oh, this is the frequency, sorry. This is like 10 megahertz, so 10, uh, and then multiply 10 to the 6. And your L is the 5 pico Henry, so 5 multiplied by 10 to uh, negative 12. And then you uh, multiply by the length of the line in the unit of feet. So you have 14 divided by 12. Let's give you 3.67, 10 to uh, negative 4 ohms. And I equal to V over impedance of the transmission line. So you have uh, divided by 3.67 10 to negative 4. This gives you very big uh, current. OK, so uh, I think this is enough for uh, today. It just give a student to understand English a little bit. Maybe uh, it's difficult to understand. Um, I'll see you in the next uh, lecture.
Okay, thank you. Bye.